In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A12 for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so it can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're going to go over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A12 for beginners. And we have a lot of cool things to show you that will help get you up to speed on using this phone. Watch till the very end. I'm also uh, going to end the video with showing you how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can uh, unlock the phone using your finger. So stay tuned till the end and let's jump right in. So first and foremost, we're just going to go over the buttons of the phone. So on the right side of the phone, you will find a volume up, volume down and a power button. Now the power button also serves as the fingerprint sensor. It's kind of hard to see in my video here, but the power button is right below the volume. So volume up, volume down, and this is the power button here. And so once we set up this fingerprint sensor, when you take your finger and you touch the power button, it will automatically unlock the phone. So again, stay tuned. We'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. At the bottom of the phone, you will find a headphone jack. You'll find the charging port, which is a type C charging port. So if you'd like to purchase an additional charger for it, it is a type C um, connection for the power. On the left side of the phone, you will find the SIM card tray, as well as the place where you'll put in your uh, memory card. So in the box of your phone, you'll have a tool that looks like this. You're gonna put it in the little hole on the left side of the phone and push it will pop out your SIM tray. And in here you can put in a memory card to expand your storage, as well as uh, the SIM card for the phone should already be in here, which gives you your service. So that is the quick tour of the phone. And now we're going to unlock the phone. So just tap the power button, just like that, that will wake up the phone and then just take your finger and you're just going to drag it across the screen. You do have to do it quickly or it will go back to sleep. Take your finger and just drag it across the screen like that. Let's hold the phone. Here we go. It's kind of hard to do it with this angle, but finger on the screen and just drag it across and that will take you into the phone just like that. Okay. So now that we're in the phone here, we're going to start with uh, how to navigate the phone and you're going to do it using the three buttons at the bottom of the screen here. So we have what is called our recent apps button, our home button and our back button. We're going to start with the home button. Now this button is going to be your best friend. Whenever you open up one of these little programs or applications, um, this is the button you tap to get back to this screen, which is considered the home screen. So for example, if I wanted to make a phone call, tap on this green button here and in here I can dial a phone number and tap the green button to initiate a call. I can look at my recent calls by tapping here or I can tap here to see my contacts that I've saved in the phone. Now, if I wanna get back to the home screen, I tap on the little circle at the bottom of the screen, the home button, and that'll take me back to this screen right here. So that's the home button. Again, whenever you tap it, it will always take you back to this main home screen. On the left side, you'll have what's called your recent apps button. Now, all these little applications, when you tap on them, they will open up and you'll be in th that particular application or program. And when you tap the home button, it takes you back to the home screen, but that application is still running in the background of the phone. So if you want to get back to one of those applications that you were using, you tap the recent apps button, and this will bring up a list of all of the programs you were previously using. So a few minutes ago, we went to the phone app, so you can see it's still open. I was also watching YouTube earlier, and this is the other application that we opened. So I can just tap on it now and it will take me back to that program. So this is an easy way to just get back to any program you were previously using. Now another cool uh, or important tip, if we tap on this recent apps button here and we notice we have all these programs running, but you say to yourself, oh, I'm not using any of these programs anymore. It's a good tip to tap the close all button that'll close all those programs so that they're not running in the background and they won't drain your battery faster. So that's just an important note. If you notice there's things running that you're not using, you can tap that button to close them. So home button, recent apps, and here we have what's called the back button. 
Now the way the back button works, it just takes us back one step. So for example, if I were to go here, which is the settings wheel, and let's say I went to the setting for uh, wallpaper. So I just selected wallpaper and it took me to this screen. If I wanted to go back one screen, I can use my back button right here and that'll take me back one step. Now let's say I were to scroll down and then this time I said, hey, I wanna go to general management. Same thing, I'm in this setting, I wanna go back, I can tap this button here and it takes me back one step. Now if I tap it again, it'll take me out of the application. So all it really does is just help you take one step back from whatever you were doing, that's it. Okay, so moving on, the next thing I wanna go over is what is called the notification panel. And so if you take your finger, put it at the top of the screen and you just swipe down like this, you will have what's called your notification panel. Now here you'll find uh, different shortcut switches that turn on and off certain settings of your phone. As well, you'll find different notifications from the applications you have installed. So an example of this is if you sign into your Google account and you wanted to see if you have uh, new emails, once you get a new email, it will show up in this list. Same thing if you have a text message, it will show up in this list if someone has sent you a new message. Um, as you download more applications, you'll find a lot more things in this list because all those applications are essentially communicating with you through this notification panel. Now, when you get a notification, uh, if you've read it and you're done with it, you can just simply swipe over and that's how you get rid of it. Now, if I swipe back down, you'll notice that notification is gone because I swiped across and we just basically um, uh, archived it. So that's how you deal with the notifications. At the top of the screen, these are, are some of the shortcut switches you have that control different functions on your phone. Um, and then if you swipe down again, just take your finger and just swipe again, you'll notice you have even more options here. So just to go over a few of the options here, you have a switch for your Wi-Fi, your sound, Bluetooth, uh, airplane mode, your flashlight. If you wanna use your phone as a flashlight, you can tap this and it will give you a flashlight. Uh, the important switches here that I think you would use the most are one, the Wi-Fi switch. So for example, if you're at home and you wanna connect to your home Wi-Fi network, you would need to make sure this switch is lit up in blue. So just to give you an example, if I tap on this one time, it's gonna basically turn off the Wi-Fi. If this is gray, it means that that switch is off. If I wanna turn it back on, I just tap on it. Now once it's blue, now my Wi-Fi is on, it's looking for a Wi-Fi network. Now if you wanna to connect to your home Wi-Fi specifically, you can take your finger and hold down on this button. Just take your finger and just touch the button like this. This will take you to your Wi-Fi setting and it will show you all the available Wi-Fi networks that are around you. So let's say you went to a friend's house and you wanted to connect to their Wi-Fi, you would uh, hold down that button, it would take you here, and then you would tap, you would find their, net, their network in this list, tap on it, and then it will ask you to enter the password for that network, so just as an example. Okay, now let's go back here. We're gonna swipe down again. We have a few more switches here. This is a volume switch. So uh, if I tap on it one time, it puts a slash over the speaker, and now the phone is in the vibrate mode. If I tap it again, now it is grayed out, which means that the sound is completely turned off. And if I tap it again, that will turn the sound back on. So when someone calls me, my phone will ring. Now let's swipe down. You can also swipe to the left here. And this will also show you a few more options you have. You have a shortcut for the dark mode setting, which is pretty cool. Tapping on this will change the theme of the phone from light to dark. Now all your settings menus will be, have a dark background. And if you want to turn it off, just simply tap there and then it will switch back to the um, light setting. You'll also find another two important things at the top here. Now just important note, so when you swipe down one time, 
In the upper right corner, you will see a wheel. This is a shortcut to your settings menu. So if you need to make a, a change to your settings, here you go. Now, I'm swiping down once. If I swipe down a second time, you have a shortcut power button right here. I can tap this button and now I can restart the phone or I can just power it off from that button. So this is the notification panel. You also have your Bluetooth switch here as well. If you're trying to connect to a Bluetooth speaker or headphones, you definitely need to tap it once, make sure it's lit up in blue, and then it will bring up the Bluetooth menu and show you all the available Bluetooth devices that are around you. And you'll, then you'll need to take your device, put it in Bluetooth pairing mode, and then select it on that list. And then it will allow you to connect your phone to your Bluetooth device. So that is the notification panel. Let's go home. We just tapped our home button. Now this application is very important. This is called the Play Store. Now the Play Store is your one-stop shop for games, uh, applications, movies, music. Um, all of it is found in that section. So we're gonna tap on the Google Play Store. Now, um, Tapping that button is gonna do different things for different people. Now, if you have not signed into your Google account or your Gmail account, you won't see this screen when you tap that button. You'll see a different screen that will say, please sign into your Google account. You will need to do that first um, before you get to this main screen. So sign into your Google or Gmail account. And if you don't remember, there should be a button that says forgot password that you can use to reset the password. If you don't have a Google account, there's a button at the bottom of the screen that will say create an account. You will need to tap that button and follow those instructions first to create your account. And then once that's complete, it'll take you to this screen, which is the Google Play Store. Now you'll notice uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll find the different sections. So games, apps, movies and TV, and books. I did mention earlier that you could download music in here and that was a mistake. You cannot download music in here, but you can download games, apps, movies, TV shows, and books. So if you wanna search for a specific application, let's say you wanted to download Uber on your phone, you come to the top of the screen where it says search for apps and games, tap in the box, and you can either type Uber with your finger just like this, and then do a search for it, and hey, we found it, great. And I can tap on this green install button to install it. Now, one other way I could have done that is I could tap on the microphone right next to the search box right here. And I can just say Uber like this. Tap, Uber. So that's a really easy way to search for applications is just use the voice um, detection and you can say it and it'll search for you. Now, when you search for an application, you should see a green button that says install next to it. Now, if you ever see this green button, but it doesn't say install, instead it has a price, that's just telling you that it's not a free application. It is a paid application. So beware, because if you're not meaning to install something that is a paid application, you might end up paying. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna tap on this green button to install Uber and you'll see this little green circle is gonna spin as it first downloads the application and then it installs it on the phone. Okay, so once the app is downloaded, um, you will find it in the app section. To get to the app section, you'll need to swipe up and this is where you'll find all the applications on the phone. So um, there's this page, you can swipe left to find more of your applications. And there is our Uber app that we just downloaded and we can simply tap it to open it up and start using it. So once again, if you wanna to get to any of your other applications, you'll just swipe up and you'll have this whole section that'll show all of your applications. You'll also have a folder here that'll have all your Google applications. So tap here and you'll find your Chrome browser, which is what you use to go on the internet, your Gmail application, YouTube, Google Maps, photos, all your other things just like that. So that's how you download an application. Now, next I wanna show you how to make a phone call 
and how to send a text message. Just go over some of those other basic details. So uh, we kind of showed this earlier, but I want to show it one more time. You go to the phone application and here you want to tap on keypad and you're simply going to type in a phone number. And then once you type in the number, you're going to tap this green button to start the phone call. So um, you will just type in the zip code and then the phone number, green button, and that will start the call. Now, if someone is calling you, you will see two buttons at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a green button and a red button. And you'll simply just need to tap on the green button to answer the call and tap on the red button to decline the call. So that's if someone is calling you. Now, if you want to send a message or text message, you're gonna tap on the blue button down here, which is your messages app. Here you'll tap on the blue circle here, and this will allow you to start a new message. And at the top, first you'll enter the phone number that you wanna text. So I'm gonna enter a number here. So there's my phone number. And then now I'm going to tap in this little white box here. And here I can type in the message. Hi. And then tap this little circle to send the message. And that's how you send a text message. Okay, next I wanna go over quickly how to take a picture. At the bottom of the screen, you will find this little red button. This is your camera button. And opening this up will allow you to take pictures. Um, you can use this button to turn the camera. So right now we're on the front camera, the selfie camera. If you wanna switch the back camera, tap on this little button here, and that will switch it to the rear camera. And then just tap on this little white button here to take the picture. After you take a picture, if you wanna see it, you're gonna tap on the circle right next to it, and this will allow you to see all the pictures that you've just taken. You can just swipe through just like that. All right. And the very last thing I promised is that we would go over how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone using your thumb or whatever finger you decide uh, to unlock it with. So we're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen Tap on that settings wheel in the upper right corner. From here, we're gonna go to the lock screen section. And then from here, we need to tap on screen lock type. So tap there. And then we're going to come down to uh, fingerprints. And we're gonna turn that on, hit continue. Now, whenever you set, set up a uh, fingerprint unlock or a face unlock, you always need to have a backup code or pattern in the event that that uh, function stops working, you'll still be able to get into the phone. So in this case, I'm gonna set up a pin and I'm just gonna make the pin 0000, hit next and then type 0000, next. So that'll be my backup in the event that my fingerprint sensor ever stops working. Now, I'm gonna pick up the phone and I'm gonna program my thumb to be the button I use to unlock the phone. I'm just gonna just begin to place it on the sensor and try to move it in different ways so it can capture my thumbprint. And it's always great to try to hold the phone how you would normally hold it because that's gonna make it easier for um, now it looks like something happened when we were setting up the fingerprint and we'll need to go back and do it one more time. No problem. We're just gonna go back to the settings, back to lock screen, and then go to screen lock type. We're gonna put in our pin. And then we're gonna go to fingerprints. Hit continue. And we're gonna just take our finger and begin to tap the button so that the phone can begin to learn our fingerprint. And again, we're trying to touch the button in different ways so that it learns all of our uh, fingerprint and it makes it easy to unlock when it's time. Now, once it's added, you can always add mo more than one fingerprint. So if you just tap add, you can add different fingers. I'm gonna hit done. Now we're gonna lock the phone by just tapping the power button. And now, if you notice, I don't have to wake up the phone to unlock it. 
the screen is off right now and I can just take my finger and put it on the sensor and then it automatically unlocks the phone just like that. So that is how you set up the fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone with your fingers. Hope you guys found this video helpful. We try to be super thorough and go over everything that a beginner would need to know to use the phone. We hope you found it helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the video. Now, if you found this video helpful, you'll also find these other two videos helpful. You'll find a uh, tips and tricks video as well as a how to mirror your screen video. And check those out too. They'll teach you more cool things you can do on this phone. Take care and as always, have a good one.